clap our hands and praise the Lord this morning. If I could have the ushers come forward, please, and make envelopes available to you this morning. While you're preparing to give this morning, um, I want to tell you two things. One is a mission report. Uh, last Saturday, or was it, it wasn't yesterday, but a week before or two weeks before. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. I was in Pittsburgh, and we had an outreach in an apartment complex that is habited by people from India and from Pakistan and all Asian people living there and uh, very successful professional types, doctors and nurses and teachers and what have you. And they, there's an open door through this church called Zion. Uh, remember them? We, we've supported Nepali immigrants through this church called Zion. But now they have an open door to do like Bible uh, vacation Bible school in this Asian uh, apartment complex. They tried it last summer and 700 people came. The, yeah, the <laughs> parents brought their kids and stayed and just enjoyed the whole program. And so we just have a tremendous open door. So we had 200 people, parents and children out for a Christmas party. And I, I sang, Jesus is the reason that we can have Christmas. Oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And, and I also went, I went, Gloria, happy birthday, Jesus. Because I had like 30 seconds to give the gospel, you know. So let's clap our hands and praise the Amen. Lord for that. So that is going to be a continuing outreach. My friend Tanya is a Christian family therapist. She's going to start parenting classes in that apartment complex. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And uh, we will just be able, there's such an openness. They just like show up for whatever we do and... Um, and just so openly, so that's exciting. We're going to have a gospel outreach, even though uh, I'm just going to Pittsburgh, you know, it's going to India, Pakistan, etc. And the other thing I wanted to tell you this morning um, is that uh, at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve, we will have the distinct privilege of hearing Derek Reeves, who is the principal violist of the Fort Wayne Philharmonic, but he's going to bring his violin, on which he is extremely proficient, and um, play along with me on some Christmas carols. And you just won't want to miss it. He's, uh, we had a, a rehearsal at my house. And wasn't it cool, Will? I mean, the kids all came piling in and everything. Once he put that bow on the string, it was really exciting to hear. So don't miss that. And now... Um, as we're going to sing this very precious Michael W. Smith song called You're Almost There, why don't you bring your offering to the Lord? You're almost there. 
you're almost where the angels see redemption's plan unfolding all hope is in the sun you'll bear you're almost there strength to do your part you're almost there you're almost there trust the father to provide bread of heaven prophesied you're almost there you're almost there you're almost where the waiting ends deliver of this song are found in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. They are the words of Mary, mother of Jesus, while she was still pregnant. my Lord. 
what circumstance you find yourself in today, no matter what trouble you're going through, God is right there with you. And he wants to speak to you. When Mary was in the middle of her situation, she was the lowest of society, a social outcast. And yet God spoke into her life peace and mercy and grace and hope and a future. And God can speak to you too, right where you are, no matter what you're going through. Just listen to his voice. Listen to the Spirit. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Praise God. Wow, what a wonderful time of worship. Let's stand up and give each other another Merry Christmas handshake or hug this morning. In Jesus' name. Merry Christmas. That was pitiful. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, there, I knew you had it in you. May I say from Jennifer and Andrew and Aaron, thank you for all of your cards and for the goodies that we've been eating. Them. Laura baked two cinnamon rolls. One for Jennifer and the other for me. And Jennifer snuck in and took a bite out of one of mine. <laughs> and our marriage is on the rocks as a result of it because they were wonderful. And you all have been so very, very kind. And I want you to know that we count ourselves blessed at Christmas to be able to be the ones who served you this past year. And we will be thrilled if you'll give us one more year to do that, unless the Lord returns. How many believe that could happen in 2020? How many hope it does happen in 2020? Amen? Well, next Sunday, I know that Pastor Andrew shared it already, but I hope that you'll make plans to come back. Because in case the Lord doesn't return in 2020, how many want to be found doing all you can for the glory of the Lord, in case he shows up, you want him finding you doing something for him. Do you feel that way? Let me, let me see how many really feel that way. All right, well, wonderful. If that's the case, then come next Sunday and we'll share what you can do here at Calvary Christian Fellowship to reach out to souls. And we've got some exciting things to be sharing with you. On our way in today, um, we, we drove by a, a church that made me so grateful, Honey Tree, for, for what you're doing. Because on Christmas Eve, they wanted people to know that they can come to their service. They'll be showing Christmas movies throughout the afternoon and evening. Bring your family and have some popcorn and celebrate Chevy Chase. And <laughs> I don't know what all they're going to be showing, but 
How many are grateful we can come and not only have music that I know will be a blessing, but that's also the time that we receive of the elements. And um, we're praying that this is going to be a time of communion. I believe the Lord's going to touch me. I'm coming expecting God to do something in my body. Carl, we're believing the Lord's going to touch your leg. I've been blessed uh, for, it's been about six years now, hasn't it, Carl, that you've been here? And Carl came on as, um, in a lot of churches, they call them armor bearer. At Calvary Christian Fellowship, we call them the king, the cane bearers. And uh, Carl comes and doesn't just help me get up here on the stool. A lot of you are unaware. He's out there waiting for me. And if there's ice, he's made sure it's all salted and cleared. If there's snow, he's shoveled it off. If there are wet leaves that are slippery, he's made sure they're swept away and there's a path. And uh, he and Gail stay until the very last ones to make sure that I get back in the car safely. How many know that's a blessing to me? And I, go ahead, some of you wanted to clap, and I think we should for that service. And today, we looked like a couple of Benny Hinn rejects walking in because I was on my canes and Carl's got one of my canes because he's suffering in his leg. Now listen, he has prayed for me and for many of you. I'm going to ask some brothers, if they will, to, uh, to come. I watched him. You all may not have been able to notice it, but while he was making the envelopes available and standing there serving, he's in a great deal of pain today. And I believe the Lord can minister to him a healing touch. Could we get some brothers to come and stand right now and lay their hands upon Brother Carl? Wonderful. Healing river flow, healing river flow, flow through this place, heal the hurting touch, revive our soul, healing river flow. Healing river flow, healing Lord, pour down upon us, make us whole. Healing river flow, healing. Flow, flow through this place, heal the hurting touch, revive our soul, healing river flow, healing river. Healing Lord, pour down upon us, make us whole. Heavenly Father, several years ago now, Lord, you laid it upon Carl's heart and my heart to enter what, Lord, your word calls in the book of Amos, the covenant of the brotherhood. And Lord, this brother of mine spiritually has prayed for me, Lord, to be lifted up out of the hospice bed and to be set free from an intensive care room. And so, Lord, it's a privilege and an honor to come and bear one who's gone to the hospital to pray for others 
and has sought, Lord, to be your hand extended to bring healing and deliverance and your touch, Lord, of mercy and grace into so many lives. And so right now, Lord Carl is in need of a healing manifestation in his body. Lord, would you touch that knee right now in Jesus' name. Lord, when he climbs into that 18-wheeler tonight, let him sense, Lord, that your healing portion has been poured out upon him. The balm in Gilead has touched him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people in the family of God agreed by saying, Amen. Thank you, brethren. If you're here while the men are making their way back to their seat and you're needing a healing right now in your own body, could you just stand right where you are? You're saying, I, I'm here today, but I need the Lord to give me a touch. Can you just stand? Look, all over the room, there are people who are standing. Would you look around, men, and if you see a brother standing, would you go and stand with them? Sisters, if you see somewhere a sister that's on her feet, would you go and just stand there with them? Hallelujah. Gail, would you go back to Gloria right there? Now, you're the family of God, and the Lord loves it when we bear burdens with one another. Would you pray for that person that you're touching right now? Lift your voice of faith up right now on their behalf, in Jesus' name. Yes, you are glorious 
and worthy to be praised. Lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise. Lamb upon the throne. If you believe the Lord's heard us pray for one another, can you say amen? amen. Praise God. You may be seated. A personal tradition that I started years ago when I was single is I started watching It's a Wonderful Life. That's uh, my favorite Christmas movie. And uh, how many remember when you turn? it seemed like this time of the year, no matter where you turned, you'd see It's a Wonderful Life. Some, I haven't been able to find it without commercials. I don't want the lousy commercials. <laughs> or it's all in color. And it wasn't made to be, it wasn't meant to be in color. It was meant to be in black and uh, and I, if you hear about it, will you call me and say it's on day or night so I can turn it on and watch it? Okay, nobody will. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, when the kids were growing up, they had another tradition. I'm going to ask Ben to help me. I don't know that I've ever done this in the house of God. When we talked about trying to arrest our tongues... Brother Stu, I brought a, a song, and I can't believe I played a secular song in church. But it fit right in because the song said, you talk too much. <laughs> and it seemed to be appropriate for what we were going to get into for our study. And uh, it's the only time I've ever seen Nancy Compton just light up in, in church when we played that secular song. But we're going we're gonna to show... A secular movie. So, um, Andrew, you got the popcorn ready? <laughs> Do we need to turn the lights out so they'll see it, Ben? Or you think they'll be able to see it? Ben's the sound man. Now he just be got promoted into being the light and sound man. Now, Bobby Compton, don't you go to sleep while this is. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Every and all the people said. Amen. I hope that you noticed something because in all the years of the children watching it, I can't say that I ever really noticed what took place with Linus, but I think it's important for us as we're looking at this Christmas season and getting ready if the Lord tarries to move into a new year. How many are grateful, first of all, that 2019 is over, or at least almost done. Can anybody else raise your hands? I'm just glad this baby is over. Well, we're going to come back to that in a minute, but let me go back to Linus with his blanket. 
I'm going to get Pastor Andrew. He's acting like he's out counting the offering. It can't be that big of an offering. But when Andrew was growing up, he had a blanket. Joni, do you remember his blanket? And he took that blanket everywhere. And it kept getting worse and worse. By the end of that blanket, we had had to cut off parts that were so nasty. It was a handkerchief. It was no longer really a blanket. And he carried that around with him. And uh, he would hold it and have his thumb in his mouth. 19 years old. He looked so ridiculous going around like that. But it was his security blanket, just like Linus. He had to have it there. And when we finally got to the place of, of taking it away from him, he wasn't 19. He was almost getting married, and I said, Andrew, you can't take that with you. When you're... Um, I started thinking about all of us because there was something that happened that I'm not sure all of us may have seen even this morning. But if you don't believe me, rent the movie and watch it yourself. In the Christmas story, when he's telling it out of the scripture, and he gets to the part where the declaration comes, fear not. He drops the blanket and lets it go. And all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me of what to share on Christmas Sunday. Because how many know we all have fears that we deal with? Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, But God has not given us, the New American Standard says, the spirit of timidity. But I still like the King James best. It says he's not given us, then the King James it says, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. There's another Christmas movie. How many have ever watched uh, Ebenezer Scrooge and the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas present and the ghost of Christmas future and that story being told over and over again from Charles Dickens? Well, Let's analyze that for just a minute because just like Linus, how many know there are security blankets that we try to pick up to deal with our fears and they apply to our past, to our present, and our future? Here's the first. How many have ever struggled with these words about your past? As you look back over 2019, do you have any if only's in your life? How many wish if only you hadn't said something in 2019? Or if only you had said something? Um, I had an opportunity. There, there's a gentleman that has cut my hair since I was 14. And uh, Stephen now is 80 seven years old and I became aware of something that I've been with him for dinners and he's come to activities with the church over and over again but I had never had the opportunity on a one-on-one -on -one to say Stephen you've been a good friend if anything happens to you well I'll see you in heaven and I was so grateful that my uncle Tom could come and Stephen was here and I let me share this because when I found out later uh, I, I had my eyes closed I wasn't looking around but one of the people when the salvation appeal was made to accept Jesus as their personal savior Stephen raised his hand and accepted the Lord as his personal savior praise God and you know go ahead if you want to clap and bless the Lord for it But how many know the enemy loves to torment us with our if-onlys this past year? Maybe, maybe the year is closing for you, and there's some place right now where you're being tormented with an if-only. You know what we need to do? Maybe you need to 
fear not and drop that blanket. There's another one where the word if's attached to it. And it's not the, the ghost of Christmas past, but it slits, switches to the, the ghost of Christmas future. Because how many can look in the year 2020 and say these two words? What if? Man, um, I can't believe, honey tree, I'm going to be 70 years old if the Lord tarries in 2020. What if one of my canes slips and hits honey tree in the... Every time I even say that, I get mad at my dad all over again. Because my dad preached on prophecy. And Jesus was supposed to be back before I would be saying I'm going to be 70 years old. In thinking about that, I, I remember all too well... When, Jen when Jennifer and I had to go in for a, a battery of tests at Lutheran Hospital. This has been now uh, 19 years ago. And to have the doctors seated there who'd run all the tests and one of them to be the spokesman to say to us, well, you need to know that with the injuries, Mr. Paino, that you've had and that you've suffered internally, your life expectancy is 18 to 20 years after the accident, and you've already exceeded that. You want to know what? I'm getting ready if the Lord tarries. I don't have to worry about what if this breaks down or what if that breaks down. You know what? In the word of God, he promises 70 years. If the Lord tarries, I'm going to make it into 70 years, not the years they promise, and it's going to be 35 years since my accident. But how many know the enemy loves to come with a what if? We're all saying, uh-oh, this, this is breaking down. Uh-oh, what if, what if that happens? What if all of a sudden there's going to be an election next year? What if those lousy Democrats, what, what, what if, what if? <laughs> what if? Here's another one, and that's the present. It's the security blanket of if too. And it can become a spirit of fear. Just like our if-onlys that we look back on this past year and are t tormented. Oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't gone there. If only I had done that differently. Or what if that takes place? What will I do? Here's one for the present. I'm going to act as if everything's okay. I'm going to act as if that didn't bother me. I'm going to act as if it doesn't hurt. I'm going to act as if everything's all right. Because I'm afraid. I had this a few days ago. I shared it with you, and I appreciated some of the kind responses that you all gave me throughout that week of letting me know you were praying for me. Have you ever had one of those experiences where you say, I'm afraid that if I open the door and start letting how I feel out, I won't be able to control getting it back in. I'm that heavy-hearted about something. This past week, I had an experience I never ever dreamed would happen. It was at our home over the dinner table. And I say this very, very carefully. But all of a sudden, I became aware at our table that I could act as if something wasn't bothering me or I could take the risk of rejection and speak the truth. And the guest that was at the dinner table, all of a sudden, instead of trying to act as if Everything's okay. I decided if I don't ever see this person again, 
I don't want to act as if I'm something I'm not. And I looked and said, son, I'm worried about you. Something's wrong and you need help. How many know sometimes to let your guard down and not be an as if and let it out be out there? That's, that's scary. That's a, that's a fear to do. Ben, will you put those words back up from 2 Timothy 1, 7? And let's look what the Lord says he does because he addresses all three of those security blankets that Linus dropped that blanket when he all of a sudden got to the part that said, fear not. The Lord wants us to fear not because he's not given us the spirit of timidity or fear, but of power and love. Can, we get, can you get the King James up there? You can't do it? Well, will you trust me that I'm quoting it properly? Power, love, and a sound mind. Now, what do those three things apply to? Well, first of all, there's power. And what's that for? That's for that ghost of Christmas past. That's for all of those if onlys. You say, well, how does power relate to that? Because, listen, how many wish you could go back in your past and redo something? How many can think of a bunch of them you'd like to read? Oh, yeah. But how many know we don't have the power to do that? It's gone. It's over. So what do we say? Well, let's have closure on it. Well, let's move on. Let's go. And how many know you can do that all you want, but it still torments you in your head? You pick that security blanket up and hold on to it. Well, if only, if only, if only, and it's just right there. Well, God, listen to this, does not live in a time-space continuum. That's why that one who was born is called the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. With God, there is no future. With God, there is no past. He is the great I am. And so our past is still in his present, just like our future is in his present. And so he says, you know what, I've got the power to do since I'm still there where your past is, I can now work all things together for good. I've got the power to do that. What the enemy meant to do to discourage you, to defeat you, and to tear your life apart, I want you to know I can work all things together for good. If we turn it over to God, all of a sudden things that we thought were going to be a disaster, they become the stepping stone to what God wants to do in our lives. He's also given us not only power, but I'm going to skip to the last one, discipline in the New American Standard, but that is literally in the King James, a sound mind. Now, I don't have it here, and some of you have heard me tell this story before, but when I was in the hospital for three months from my car accident, I will never forget being in the bed. Now, my mother... My mother came to the hospital every day for three months. She never missed a day of being there with me. And she was there one day, and I was laying there, and it was after my surgery, and I heard this scratch, Matt, on the bed. Well, every time I do that, and I said, Mother, what's making that noise back behind my head? And she put her hand back there and she said, well, there's a wire sticking out. And I said, there's a wire sticking out of my back? She said, yes, I've not seen that before. She said, that's, not, that's unusual. <laughs> my mother was very observant. And the nurse came in and I said, what's that wire that's sticking out of my back? And, and she said, well, that's the wire from the sutures of where they put the rod in your back. And that's what's sticking out there. And that, that, that wire goes all the way down through your spinal cord. And I said, well, am I always going to have this wire sticking out of my, my back? And she said, oh, no, no. The doctor will come in and he'll remove it. And I said, well, does that hurt? And she said, it's relatively painless. Now, I've learned something, Bob. When, when medical people 
tell you it's relatively painless. Pardon me, but it's going to hurt like, it's going to really hurt. And all of a sudden, I did. I, I, was, I got depressed because I, you know, I'd, I'd been in a car accident. My back was broken. Every rib on this side of my body was broken. My clavicle was broken. My lung was punctured. I, I said, you know, I, I said, God, I've been through enough. I don't need in. I don't deserve any more relatively pain. And for three days, I slipped into depression. I didn't eat. I, I didn't want. I just laid on my side, and I just, I just felt sorry for myself because they're going to come and take that out. And I'll never forget Dr. Hamilton uh, Hoffman coming back. He was my orthopedic surgeon, and he, he walked in the room and said. Something's going on that the nurses have called us that the, the, you're depressed and you're going through a bad time. What's going on? And I said, the wire. He said, what about the wire? I said, you're going to take it out. He said, yes, we have to take it out. I said, no, you don't. I want you to leave it there. And he said, why don't you leave it there? I said, you take it out, my butt will fall off. I think that's what's attached. It's, it's keeping it there. I don't want you to mess around. Just leave my body alone. And, and, and he said, no, we, we've got to take it out or it'll cause other problems. And I said... Doc, I'm just not ready for you to do that. He said, well, let's take a look and see, see how it's coming along back there. They had to bring in two nurses and an orderly to, to roll me over. And he said, now, what is it you're worried about? I said, you can see it. It's the wire right there. He said, oh, you mean this? He'd already taken it out. Are you all getting what I'm trying to say with this corny little personal story? I wasted three days of my life worried about a what if that never turned out the way I thought. That's why he wants us to have, it does require discipline, that new American standard word, but God wants, to have, wants us to have a sound mind. He's given that to us. And number three, He's not only given us the ability to drop the blanket of if only and the blanket of what if and as if with his love. Because God says, you don't have to act as if anything. I love you just as you are. When you're feeling good, when you're feeling bad, when you're obeying and when you're disobeying, it doesn't change my love for you. Now, it may change some things in your life, but my love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whew. That's his love. Now, I want you to notice something, though. When Linus gets all done, he has that experience where he gets to Fear not, that the angel declared. He drops the blanket and he finishes it. But when the story's done, did you notice what he did? He picked it up again. How many know we can listen to this today and we'll be just fine? But if all of a sudden we start getting condemnation about our past, we'll pick up that blanket again. Or if we start getting anxious about 2020 or something that's going to take place, we'll pick it up again. Or maybe you're getting ready, as some already are. I had three messages this morning of both saying, we're not, we're not going to be able to be there. Shirley said to me, it's a tough call, Brother Phil. It's either you or my grandchild. Well, I didn't see her this morning, so I guess who won? <laughs> But sometimes when our families get together, we try to act as if there weren't problems and hurts and difficulties. They'll all be there that we can pick back up if we want. But maybe you've never seen this before. Ben, can you put that last picture of how the Christmas of Charlie Brown ends? The lights are still on. Can you all see? Where's the blanket? It's wrapped around the tree. You see, 
what the Lord wants us to be aware is this. We can have little spiritual experiences that won't do much for us. We'll pick up our blankets again. But if we'll come not to a tree with ornaments, but a tree that had the Son of God nailed to it, that there said, it's finished. Whew. Now you can say, Lord, I want to leave it at the foot of the cross. How many know a manger will be where it begins, but the cross is where it ends? Could we stand together, please? Mary had a little lamb. Aren't you grateful that its fleece was white as snow? How I many are grateful that the lamb didn't follow Mary, but it's the lamb of God that we can follow and lay down our fears? Let's just bow our heads for a minute. And I know it's Christmas Sunday. We're going to go home and get ready to get everything ready for our Christmas in our house. But let's take a moment and just let the Lord touch us. How many are here today? And just before we leave, you can look back over 2019 and say there's some things, Lord, that are my if-onlys that the enemy's trying to torment me and has tried to discourage me about over this past year.